This video is brought to you by the Wrestling GM app. Are you ready to embark on a GM experience like never before? The Wrestling GM universe contains 20 wrestling companies that span over the USA, Canada, Mexico, Europe, and Japan. Take charge of any wrestling organization and control their direction and fate by booking 90-minute shows. The Wrestling GM app is available on iOS and Android. To download the game, click the link in the description box below. Now, time for our interview with Juice Robinson. What's up, everyone? It is Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to introduce to you my guest for today. He is a former two-time IWGP United States Heavyweight Champion and former Impact Tag Team Champion, former IWGP Tag Team Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Juice Robinson. What's up, Juice? Hey, what's up? Thank you. That was a very, very nice uh, introduction. You know, I always tell like the introductions always, you know, the, 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 it gets the interview started. So you know how things are going to go based on if, whether or not you nail the introduction. So that's very good to hear. So juice, I got to tell you, I'm very excited to chat with you. I think the last time, uh, I don't know if you remember, but you were a guest on X-Pac one to three sixty a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, I'm not a weeks ago, a couple of years I ago. Say, actually. Oh, I do not remember that. Then <laughs> yeah. it must have been. It was actually like a couple, like, I think it was like two years ago, I think that you were a guest and I was one of the co-hosts that so we got to interview you there. Uh, and it was very, very fun just to kind of chat with you and get to know, you know, a little bit more about you. Yeah, I had a great time. I do remember that because it was my one and only time doing an uh, interview with X-Pac. Nice. And nice. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Obviously a hero of mine and man, yeah, it's cool to be, you know, interviewed by your one of the people that you looked up to very wild very wild yeah it's always so much fun and it's been it was a cool experience so now let's go ahead and talk about some of the events that are coming up right now because on saturday november 13th new japan is back in northern california for battle in the valley seven matches have been announced we got names on the card such as jay white tomohiro ishii will osprey yourself versus moose so i kind of want to kick things off there with you know what can fans fans expect from the show what can fans expect from your match and not only most you're going to get josh alexander so the one thing you're going to get from this card is you're going to get a little impact wrestling and everybody's you know talking about the forbidden door right now well it will be wide open in san jose at the battle in the valley because you're going to have josh alexander and moose and those are the two top guys you know uh sammy callahan's got a broken leg and eddie edwards you know those are the those are the tip top guys in uh, Impact, so it's cool that they're going to be in a New Japan ring. Other than that, you're just going to get New Japan Pro Wrestling, which we all know, if we're fans of it, is awesome. Uh, that's that's our goal. That's our mission statement. Try to bring you what we do in Cork and every single night when we're over there. Uh, it's going to be awesome. You know, that's one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about you too, because. Uh, you know, as a person who's been, you know, a strong focal point in New Japan and New Japan strong most recently, you know, with the changes in the pandemic and all of that, how important was it for you and for everybody in New Japan strong to essentially get this, you know, get this off and running off the ground, especially during a time right now when things have been changing because of the pandemic? Well, you said it right there, the pandemic, uh, New Japan. Well, I can't say it, but you did <laughs> the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> it was strong was birthed out of the pandemic. Um, that's where it all started. We were forced into a studio. Uh, we were forced to just, um, you know, wrestle in front of an audience of one, the camera. We couldn't do it in front of people. So that is uh, where strong started. And then it's weird because when we started the pandemic, our entire, um, you know, U.S. expansion, our dreams, our hopes and dreams to do that kind of got the brakes put on it. It was came to a halt and then strong happened. And now a mixture between strong and our old idea of, you know, trying to bring New Japan to every, you know, you know, every town or at least every region in America. You know, now they're getting mixed and melded as one. And now we have strong touring, you know, you get like you said, you're getting Ishii, you're getting Will. It's like we're bringing the best, you know, we're bringing them all. And uh, it's going to be a revolving door. So it's awesome. It's just great. 
Are you surprised by the life that New Japan Strong has sort of taken? And, you know, you get these mixture of guys that you probably, you know, didn't expect to see on, you know, a New Japan banner. And now you are and you kind of get like this mixture of talent. And it's been pretty cool to see. I think that's the cool thing about Strong is that anytime you could have anything. You, uh, I mean, I've just looked at the card to, to like prepare for this interview and I saw Josh Barnett is ra- wrestling Alex Coughlin in like the opener of the TV tapings. I mean, that right there, I didn't know I want to see it, but I do, you know, now I know I want to see it. Anything can happen with Strong. Anybody that doesn't work for the so-called bad people, WWE, can <laughs> show up and, you know, wrestle with us, with impact guys. It's just totally, you know, everybody throws it around dream matches. I don't like to use that because a dream match to me is like Randy Savage versus gorgeous George. It's a dream. It can't happen. It's not moose versus juice, but we'll talk about that. I mean, it rhymes, but it's not a dream match, but you're getting interpromotional noise. And that's awesome for everybody involved. I've also been noticing, you know, a lot of names, you know, a lot of young guys, too, that, you know, I knew about here because of, you know, the 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 the, the SoCal Indies and all of a sudden, like, I've seen them on New Japan and I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's pretty so, dope. Yeah, that was the other point. You asked me that in the question before. Yeah. So, like, the Barrett Browns of, you know, of the world, you know, or the Danny Limelights or name some other new guys that are just strong uh, or just uh, from strong. Uh, Tom Lawler. Uh, the West Coast Connection or whatever their names are. See, I don't even know, but they are now New Japan. And I'll be wrestling them. Like, they are now synonymous with New Japan Strong, you know? When I first walked in, the first time we did one, I saw these guys and I was like, oh, these guys, you know, these guys aren't a part of, these aren't New Japan guys, but now they are New Japan guys. You know, now if you see, if you saw Tom Lawler in a G1, nobody would bat an eye. Would you? I wouldn't. No, definitely not. Yeah, exactly. And like, uh, it's just going to be a huge jumping off point. Like Leo Rush, that's where he started strong. Where could he go? Super Junior with the trophy in his hand? Who's to say? I mean, it's great. Those guys are now, now New Japan strong is New Japan. So it's just, it's awesome. How do you and it gives the, my favorite part of it all, I'm sorry to cut you off, but is that okay. the, LA, the LA Dojo kids play such a huge, huge role in it. And they are so ready for it and it's cool because now our audience gets to see them grow like the japanese audience gets to see their japanese young boys grow so it's just a really beautiful organic thing that just totally happened by accident i think it's passion too you know they're they're, you know you know you have these people here that you know maybe didn't necessarily go you know a certain route you know go over to japan you know do the dojo and all of that and you know they had a different you know uh you know a different entrance into wrestling and we're sort of you know seeing them be brought into this new japan card so for you you know as somebody that did train in the dojo and you know as somebody that is doing all of this how does it feel to have this mixture of talent in there and how do you think it's evolving the product I think I think the greatest thing is New Japan has grown just by leaps and bounds since I started there in 2015. The amount of foreign talent involved now, you know, is growing. The amount of Japanese uh, shows and the amount of Japanese bookings that the Japanese wrestlers are getting now in America. The popularity of guys like Tomi Arishi and Minoru Suzuki. I'm not going to say that they weren't popular five years ago because they were, but even more so now. I think. New Japan is growing and the roster is, you know, we, it needs to be doubled. It is, it has doubled in size. I think we're seeing almost like two rosters similar to a two different brands, kind of in a way you're starting to see new Japan USA and new Japan, you know, the original ones, but it's, yeah, that, it's just awesome. It's growing and where it's going to go, who knows, but it's, it's going to cool be a lot of crossover. Yeah. Yeah, I like the crossover in terms of like there's certain matchups that I wasn't expecting. Like when you see the names and you're like, oh, man, like all of a sudden you're seeing, you know, Fred Rosser and you're just like, wait, what? How is this all coming together? It's pretty interesting. But that's the thing that I also want to get into, because when, you know, we talked on the pandemic and, you know, we talked about the birth of New Japan Strong and, you know, touched on that. But I do want to talk about the fact that 
obviously traveling to Japan isn't the same anymore. You know, things and restrictions have changed. Things are a little bit harder than they were, you know, pre pandemic and all of that. So for you, how has it been to not be able to go to Japan as often and for as long of periods as you used to go? And you know, you've been here now in the States for for a good chunk of time. So how has that also, you know, changed your lifestyle? Wow, well, phew. I just said earlier today to Tony that my life coming out of this pandemic is way better than it was going in. My life has totally changed. Uh, I don't want to, we don't need to get personal about my life story and stuff, but I, when this all started, I had a, I was, I had a little bachelor pad, you know, studio apartment in Tokyo next to Shinjuku station, the world's largest train station. So I was living a fast bachelor you know, lifestyle, not saying I didn't want to settle down, but I, w I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't, uh, there was no signs of slowing down. And then now I'm sitting in a house, you know, that I bought and I'm engaged. I'm going to be married. I have a dog running around annoying me right as we speak. Like, it's just a crazy thing. I'll always be, you know, with New Japan in my heart. You know, those are my guys. Those are my boys. Those are my people that gave me the chance. I'll never turn my back on New Japan. But right now, the, my life has just changed. It's just so, I'm just not that 25-year-old kid, you know, with a Paul McCartney autobiography and his, you know, book bag wanting to travel the world anymore. That's just not who I am. But I still want to be a part of New Japan. And I just don't know how I'm going to be, but I will be. But it's, I don't know if that answers your question, but this pandemic, yeah, it's thrown a whole monkey wrench into my whole life, but for the better. I think it does because, you know, I, I was honestly like going into like asking you that question. I thought you were going to be like, man, I can't wait to go back to Japan, you know, you yeah. know, things. but it's true, though. People's lives change because of this. And you kind of start to see, you know, a different alternative, a different way of living that at the end of the day, you're like, oh, my God, like this is exactly, you know, where I was meant to be and whatnot. So that brings me into impact wrestling, because like I said, you've been here for, you know, several months now and a lot of the work that you've also been doing on top of the new japan strong shows has also been with impact wrestling uh obviously you know holding the tag team but the tag team titles and all of that so i want to start off with a little bit of a broad question but how has that experience with impact wrestling been the last several months well i mean i love impact uh it's 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 what i really like i you know i like lights camera action here we go you know tv wrestling you know that's what i grew up on that's what i grew up like uh manifesting in my brain as a child on my trampoline in my living room, like crawling across, reaching for the tag. You know, I always viewed myself as, you know, somebody in front of a camera on in a US company. So that is just that right there just makes me so happy to do it all the time because it's so different than what I'm used to in Japan. Cause I never knew that I would just land in Japan and that I would take to it, or I don't even know if I did take to it, but I just ended up going and I didn't come back for five years. You know, it was a job, an open-ended thing and it stuck, but I don't know if I'm natural at that, the way that I do it in New Japan. You know, I feel more natural sometimes in an impact setting. It's, so, I don't know if that makes sense. It might be I a little bit of an artistic answer to you, but I do feel there's something about impact that I just, I, nobody, I don't need to know how to do it. It's just naturally. I take to it kind of like a duck takes the water. You know what I mean? It just, it feels good. Well, let's talk about that, you know, and it feeling good because you obviously, you know, you 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 got to win the Impact World Tag Team titles. And then from there, you and David got to, you know, wrestle against teams such as the Good Brothers, Ace, Ace Austin, Madman Fulton, you know, all of these different teams with different in-ring styles. So for you, you know, getting to work with all of these different teams and different things that they bring to the table, what was that experience like for you? And how did that sort of, you know, I don't know what, what the word is, but how did it essentially like reinvigorate your, you know right. your your love of professional wrestling i got it if, if you if you get the questions too long i'll forget the first <laughs> half of them but uh no i got you me so me and finley i don't want to say that we were we weren't bored i don't want to i don't want that to be the headline that we were bored with the competition in new japan but we have wrestled everyone and i think god would say it i think yoshihashi and goto or evil and sonata when they were friends or any, you know, Zach and Tai Chi, you know, we have wrestled each other a lot. 
So that's great. But like it is, it was fun the first time to get in there with ASOS and uh, Sawyer Fulton to see, you know, what they're all about uh, with XXXL, you know, with all these guys. It, it's fine. It's fun to get in there and like see where we are with the Good Brothers now compared to where we were with the uh, when they were the Bullet Club guys when they, you know, back when we, me and him started when we were, you know, taking a knee on the outside of the ring, you know, so it's just, it's always exciting to test yourself against other people in other companies and to see, dude, uh, we're pretty much know where we stack up against, you know, our, our uh, new Japan teams, you know, and we know. So to go now to impact and see where we, you know, where do we actually fit in amongst those teams? And I think, we were pleasantly surprised. I mean, that's, I don't say it's a surprise, but it was just fun to find out we were right. Like, we fit in good. We have good matches there. We enjoy the competition there, as well as elsewhere we probably will, too. It's exciting times in wrestling, and the fresh matchups have us really, really excited. Being with Impact for a while, how do you feel you like the direction in which they are going, or what do you like that they are bringing to the table that perhaps maybe another wrestling company isn't bringing to the table? Well, the, I mean... The thing about Impact is it just seems real. Like, hey, well, give it a shot. You know, give it a good, fair, honest shot, you know, and we'll see how it goes. And it just feels like they're not going to repeatedly beat a dead horse with something that doesn't work because it's too small of a company. They're going to have to look elsewhere in a hurry. So I, I love that everybody, you know, comes through, gets a chance. I'm, the, I'm back with some of my friends from the past, uh, you know, Morrissey. Um, Ray Walt, you know, these are people, uh, Sue Young, even I've, you know, these, a lot of these people that I've known from, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, there's Scott Demore himself, you know, these are people from way back when I started that I've, um, you know, come to encounter an impact again. It's, it's just, it's a great, it's, it's so much fun. I can't even remember your question. <laughs> that was really just what I wanted to know, kind of like what you thought about the direction in which the company was moving yeah. in. Because there's always it's... these changes being made. And right now with the competition being so hot, like, you know, everybody's trying to come up with ways to really get on top. Yeah, it's it's right there in there. I mean, there's guys that are wrestling um, with AEW. There's guys that are wrestling with New Japan. Everybody's going through it, going through impacts right now. Like Christian Cage was there. Anybody can show up. Mickey James is there. It's, it's, it is what it is. It's right there in the mix with all the, with everything going on. So we're talking about all of these changes right now in pro wrestling and that um, prior to the pandemic, you were doing some work with Ring of Honor, given the, like we were mentioning, relationships with all these different promotions. Now, Ring of Honor has been in the news as of late, unfortunate news that they're taking a hiatus. So as somebody who did spend some time doing matches in Ring of Honor what are your thoughts? How did you feel when you heard this news about Ring of Honor? I was shocked. I didn't, I, it took me a second to realize kind of what that meant. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this, I mean, this is a pretty big deal. You don't just do that as a company. And now, so you got to take a second. We got to take a second and lick our wounds of some, some sort of wounds. I don't know what ones, financially, creative wounds, something, but they got to take a pause for the cause and fucking go back to the drawing board, apparently. So that does suck because I know a lot of people that, you know, their life is, <laughs> that's how they make money <laughs> in their life. So for that to go on a hiatus, it's scary. And I was looking forward to going back to uh, wrestle there again, because <laughs> there's a lot of people that are really good there. And there's a lot of really cool people there. Uh, I hope that whatever they're looking for, they can find in their hiatus and get back to doing wrestling and employing wrestlers and, you know, putting on shows that fans want to go to because the more shows, um, the more companies, the more places for wrestlers to work. It's just better. A healthier wrestling business is better for all involved, including you, including exactly. you asking me these questions for whatever your motives are in this interview. All of us were all dependent on companies like ring of honor, not just WWE. So I am rooting for a ring of honor. I want them to pull, you know, you know, pull through. 
And it's one of those things too, like when you see that when I saw their post, you know, Ring of Honors, I think for me at least, and for so many people, they you have all of these positive memories and all of these wrestlers that you discovered in Ring of Honor. And, you know, I've followed their careers throughout that time period. So it was very heartbreaking to see that news. And it, it's just like, damn, like, why does this stuff happen? You know, but at the end of the day, I feel like everything happens for a reason. So we're going to kind of, you know, see what ends up happening there. But speaking of things happening for a reason, you know, you were somebody that got started off, you know, in NXT and, you know, before NXT kind of became like this big indie, more of the OG NXT. And obviously, you know, you, you ended up moving forward, going a different direction, but now NXT has also gone an entirely different direction with NXT 2.0 as somebody that was in NXT, you know, the OG NXT. How do you feel about the comparisons between when you were there and kind of similarly to what you're seeing right now with NXT 2.0? Well, I'll be honest. I saw one episode of NXT 2.0 and it was uh, where Rick Steiner's kid uh, beat oh, Braun Breaker, uh, LA yeah. Knight. Yeah. yeah. Braun Breaker. And he screamed something and he sounded like Scott Steiner and he had the Rick Steiner singlet and he looked cool. And, uh, that's the only one I saw. I looked, I don't know. I've heard a lot of people don't like it. And I've heard a lot of bad. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people drag it down and say that it ain't no good. But uh, the thing about it is, is they might not care if it's good, to be quite honest, or they might not be trying to entertain you. It's more, I think, used now back to its original purpose, where they're trying to, you know, they're using it as a uh, a nursery, so to speak, to like put training wheels on guys that they think have a lot of potential, you know. And that's just what it is. That's just their philosophy right now. And that might change like it did when I was there. Because mm -hmm. I remember when I got signed to the WWE, they didn't want anybody over 30 years old. They didn't want anybody under six foot. And they didn't want you to know anything about wrestling. That was why I thought I was made the right decision when I was 22 two years old and signed. I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Then something changed. And all of a sudden, they wanted Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and Pog, and they didn't want, you know, young, you know, they didn't want people without experience. They wanted, you know, Chris here of the world, which I get that too. Then I went out and tried to become the, you know, I tried to become that. And now they're back to wanting people that were under 30 years old. And, you know, hey, I'm over six foot. All right. But I'm, now I'm over 30 years old. You're like, it's kind of like trying to find the trends, right? It's like, just, what's just in, shows what's you. not in right now? But if you base your happiness off those people, then you might not be happy because they don't they make a lot of people unhappy, but they don't control me. So I'm I'm cool. But it is funny. Uh, yeah, and you're, I feel like I don't really yeah, good. to make to, to answer your question, I don't know anything about NXT point two point oh. I heard it sucked, but I'm I imagine they couldn't give a crap if it sucked or not. That's my Possibly. answer to that. Possibly. And I could and I I above all of that. Me, I out above all that, I care even less about all that. <laughs> NXT 2.0 is yeah, not something on my in my brain at it's any just time. A, it's <laughs> so wild though, like how everything changes. Like already, you know, just talking about like the Forbidden Door, you know, this birth of New Japan Strong, and then on top There's of that, so you much, Ring of exactly. Honor going out of business. These changes in NXT, it's nuts. It's nuts. So with that all being said, you know, to kind of wrap up this interview. For you, like within like, I don't know, maybe a year or two, what would you say ideally is where you would like to see your wrestling career be at? Or maybe just, you know, some of the goals that you may have in mind. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I right now, I think I'm just going to float for a while because right now there are so many other things on my mind really than wrestling. So I don't know. I don't, I don't really know where I'm going to even be next year with wrestling. So. I might get fired up to do it. I might not. I don't really know. I know <laughs> we, we shall see. We shall see. But uh, I might just float for a while. I think it's time for me just to do my thing, on a, be my own you know, boss, and just do what I want to do on a weekly basis. Question okay. number one. Name your top three favorite TV shows. Shit. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> my top three favorite TV shows. Oh, my God. Oh, I watch too much of the news. What do we watch? What do we watch a lot? Oh, can we go back to that? Let me think of that. Yeah, we'll come so. back to that. Question number two. Describe the perfect burger. Lots of mayonnaise, extra pickle, mustard, no, never ketchup. 
Yeah, good amount of onion and pickle. Very important. Question number three: Who are you most? Who are your most listened to artists or bands? Ooh, right now I was just I was just listening to Leonard Skinner, and then I've just been like flipping through. I was listening to CCR. I'm moving right now, so I'm driving a lot, and I've just been listening to like CCR, like Tom Petty, like my back to my roots. <laughs> Perfect time to listen to those songs that you like yeah. used to listen to back in the Stuff day. I grew up on, back, yeah. yeah, they bring back the best memories. Uh, question number four: What is your favorite movie genre? I don't know, maybe just drama. I like dramas. Question number five: What's the perfect way to spend a day off? <sighs> on the couch. <laughs> question number six: How nervous were you to propose? Oh, very, very, very nervous. <laughs> But I was smart enough to know not to plan any dialogue. Don't ever plan diet. Don't. I didn't want to be one of those guys like I first saw you. Ah, that scared me. I just wanted, you know, it's simple. You know, one knee, one line. Just get it out. If you pick the right moment, you already won. That was my philosophy. Keep it simple, stupid. The kiss formula. But I was very, very nervous. Did you like make sure to plan like every little thing, or were you kind of like, okay, I'm gonna do this like spontaneously, like everything around what you're gonna say? I no, I kept it. I kept it really easy. I made sure I knew I needed to make sure that it was documented, so I had somebody there, and I knew she wouldn't expect it, but I knew it was a good the timing of it. It made sense when it happened, and it all it was like, yeah, there was nothing to plan, so nothing could really get messed up. Unless I couldn't get the ring out of my pocket, which I was like, uh, 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 I was like, like feeling it through my pants the entire time. But You're like, which hand just... is it again? Which hand is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, question number seven: uh, Best places to eat when you're on the road? Ooh, okay. If I'm trying to be healthy, you probably got to eat like Chick Fil A or uh, Pollo Tropical. That's If you ever, if you're uh, down by Florida, uh, I like Waffle House. That's one of my favorites. Um, anywhere you can get a steak or a salad. I'm, any, yeah. Lately, I've just been eating salads when I'm trying to be healthy. Anyways, I've been moving, so all you know, all hell breaks loose. All the rules go yeah. out the window. But yeah, Pollo Tropical, Chipotle, and uh, I was, what was the other one I said? Uh, uh, Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Yeah. Yeah. Question number eight: What's your biggest gym pet peeve? Not putting away your weights. I, and that's, and the close one is like when guys are like grunting and putting on some sort of like, I, well, everybody should search buff dudes. They're these two guys that make a YouTube show, but they have like this uh, video called uh, Gym Wildlife. And it's kind of like a comedic uh, small movie about how like men are just so stupid in the gym. And we are, come on, dude. There's no reason to be making noise in LA fitness. Get real. Good God, it's LA Fitness. Relax. You can force the blood to the muscle without making a peep. Trust me, and you'll look good probably if you're eating the right stuff. Ugh. Yeah, but anyways, even with that being said, not putting away your weights, that really chaps my ass because that's just laziness and that's just not having respect for your fellow man. Okay, that's just downright ignorant, not cleaning up after yourself. Sickening. That is true. And no sound yep. effects. <laughs> and question number nine, you kind of answered this one, but do you have any pets? I know you mentioned a dog. I do. Where is he? Oh, you want to see it? Can I travel yes, on the show? Please. Yeah, Here go, go. ahead. So I'm all this for is... a tour. <laughs> oh, how cute. What's his name? His name's Ralph. Oh, hi, Ralph. Hello, Hello Ralph. I think, is this Ralph's official uh, television debut? <laughs> No, Tony had him on something before too. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, that's Ralph, and now he's perky. Oh, yeah. now he's like, I'm up, lights, now camera, action, like, ready what to was that? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ralph, he's a beagle healer. Oh, adorable. Um, and last question, question number 10. Do you collect anything? Uh, I, well, we're gonna, I'm gonna start collecting records. I know that's not very original, but I don't really care because, you know, I don't know. I like music and, you know, it's, that's a cool thing to collect because you can, and I like old music. That's the thing. So, oh, like so you're the vinyls stuff. and stuff. That's what you want to start yeah. collecting too. Oh, yeah. That's actually I mean, become not, very popular. I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody probably does it, but well, that's all right. I like <laughs> it. And it's 
when you collect it, it looks, it's a cool decorative piece for your house. You know yes. what I mean? You get a cool shelf, a lot of cool shelves you can get to hold records. Yeah. It's just fun. It's fun that when you have people over, throw a record on, drink and have a couple drinks, bullshit, you know, it'd be, yeah, it's a good thing. That's what I'm going to start doing, collecting records. I like that. I think that's a really awesome. This is news. Awesome so this thing. is breaking news live on your show. There you go. You were go. the first to ask me. Juice Robinson, <laughs> collecting records. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Juice, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today, to chat about the show, to do this interview. I really appreciate it. Before we go, please feel free to plug anything you'd like to plug in, any of the upcoming shows, et cetera. Yeah, I just want to definitely plug Battle in the Valley, November 13th at the San Jose Civic at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Be there, you know. Josh Alexander's going to be there. Will Ospreay's going to be there. Ishii vs. J. Juice vs. Moose. Um, it's going to be great wrestling, obviously. And then two days later, we are in Riverside at the Riverside Municipal Auditorium. And we got some uh, TV, some NJPW Strong. There's the shirt and JPW Strong matches. I mean, this is the infancy of New Japan Strong coupled with the U.S. expansion that we were trying to do a couple of years before that we had to slow down on. So get with it, people. Come and see us. And then you can watch yourself on New Japan Strong every Saturday night on New Japan World. So there you go. There's all my plugging. Perfect. Well, I'm going to go ahead and post all of those links in the description box below so you guys can get all the information that you need. Until next time, I'm Denise Salcedo. This is Juice Robinson, and we'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone.